Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel, and I'm up past my bedtime to put this video out for you. It's almost midnight as I record this, but it's been a few days since I put anything out, and I can't sleep anyway. So here we go. I picked out a few interesting topics for you. I'm going to talk about, first of all, uh, got an update on some activity taking place on the XRP Ledger. Uh, I'd like to update that uh, when I have it for you. It's from Galgatron. He tweeted uh, the, the latest out several hours ago. Uh, I've, I've got uh, some fun facts for you. Have you ever, have you ever wondered? Because you know, XRP, every time XRP is transacted, a tiny, tiny, tiny fraction of your XRP is actually burnt, gone forever. And, uh, and that's intentionally done by, by Ripple. They could have programmed it so there's no fee, but uh, it's to uh, prevent against uh, the prevent uh, denial of service attacks. Because uh, it would be very costly to attack the, uh, the whole network as a result of that. But anyway, uh, have you ever wondered how long it would take for all of the XRP out there to be burnt? I got some numbers for you, and I found it very interesting. I thought it would be a fun topic of conversation for my video here. And I also want to cover for you, and this is fascinating to me. You guys familiar with Facebook coin? Okay, they're releasing their white paper on June 18th. It's not even announced yet, but uh, there are a couple things that are known about it, which is uh, Facebook coin is going to be a stable coin, which is going to be backed by a basket of fiat currencies. And so you've got a couple Bitcoin maximalists, Max Kaiser and uh, Charlie Shrem, for example, uh, two of the ones that I'm going to cite today. Uh, they're saying that this means the end of XRP. Then you have an XRP community member uh, who I'm going to pull up. He got uh, featured in an article by todaysgazette.com. And uh, he states that it, this, this whole thing with Facebook's coin getting launched, it's going to be the end of Bitcoin, not XRP. And then you have uh, the senior, I think, I forget the title, senior marketing something. I'll, I'll, I'll pull him up and we'll get the title right. But uh, there's a guy named Matty Greenspan from eToro, and he has a different opinion than those guys. He says that the Facebook coin is not competing with Bitcoin. He says it's competing with the dollar. Oh, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I'm going to break it down for you and tell you which of them is right, if any of them. <laughs> because I have a strong opinion on that one, and I, 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 know, I do know the answer. I think. You, you tell me. <laughs> okay. Before we get going here, uh, if you would please delicately tap the like button. I would definitely appreciate that. Help support the channel. So um, thank you if you are willing to do that. And uh, go ahead and subscribe. You know what? Go ahead and subscribe. And why? I'm going to pitch myself here. If you subscribe right now, you and me can be friends. You know what? We might even become best friends. Do it. Subscribe. All right. All right. Now I'm going to get going. Galgatron first here. All right. Here's what he tweeted out tonight. Latest charts, remittance size payments yellow has leveled off and some preliminary investigating has isolated this activity to very few actors making numerous seemingly alg algorithmic uh, payments. No further insights yet. And um, I'm going to link this. I don't always uh, link tweets, but this one I will because it's got an uh, image if you want to see the graphic of it. And uh, he has these updates somewhat frequently. Now, there's another tweet I wanted to read in this thread here. And I think it sums up what's going on here perfectly, just so that you know. Overall, in the low payment ranges, such as remittances, which are yellow, and micropayments, which are purple in the chart, uh, we see how significant the moves are with just a few actors. This indicates to me that adoption is still very nascent, but uh, when it comes, these volume charts are going to seem like nothing. And so I'm going to update this. Anytime I see this, um, if I'm about to record a video, I'm going to share this with you. I think this is going to be a fun thing to follow as long as Galgatron keeps putting this data out here. Uh, and he's getting the data, he says, says from uh, Google BigQuery. But um, over the months and years that follow, it's going to be fun to watch this. So while my report today is, eh, nascent, not a lot going on, Galgatron's predicting a pop one day. And I think that's going to come to pass. So let's keep tracking it. He had another fun <laughs> tweet out. Actually, let me just show you this first so you can see why I'm about to read this one. Um, we all know that crypto is crazy volatile, right? Here's Litecoin today at 139. I hadn't tracked it in a while. I, I, you know, I'm not going to tell you my XRP holdings, but I have one Litecoin. I'll, I'll, I'll share that with you. I have one Litecoin, and I bought it like a year and a half ago. Like the day I entered crypto, I was like, oh, I'll buy a Litecoin. It was like 60 bucks or something. I, I'm just going to hang on to it. If it goes to zero, I don't care. I really don't care. I so, so, so don't care about it. Um, anyway, <laughs> uh, it's, so anyway, it's been, it's been rallying here, and I, I saw this tweet from Galgatron, which is the reason I even know this, and he tweeted this out, and I, I seriously, if you're an XRP, I know, I know, I know, it, it can be not fun to see that XRP's price seems to stay flat longer than other cryptocurrencies, even though it is still volatile, of course, 
And so Galgotron tweeted this out. I know some of you are upset that other coins seem to be popping. First off, you'll never be able to predict these pops. And secondly, they're false well pumps to lure you in. Stick with fundamentals and don't chase. And then he has a link here. Uh, if, if you want, I'll, I'll link this too. Uh, if you click on this link, he's got a, it'll go to his blog. And you can check it out. And I love uh, every single blog I've ever read from him. It's been fantastic. He's just a wealth of knowledge. So if you got some time, definitely check it out. But uh, absolutely, uh, for me, and it's been like this for me for day one because I am not here for ideological reasons. I am an XRP community member because I'm a crypto enthusiast, specifically XRP. And I understand that we're seeing the very beginning stages of real-world adoption for XRP. I'm here for the fundamentals. That's, that's the reason. You know, as far as Bitcoin being adopted as a peer-to-peer -peer cryptocurrency, well, that could happen with, if not Bitcoin, a cryptocurrency down the road at some point. Maybe it'll take decades. Maybe it'll be sooner. Maybe it'll be longer. I don't know. It could happen. Peer-to-peer -peer cryptocurrency, it's just one freaking use case. But the fundamentals there, it's, it's not even possible currently with Bitcoin. The Lightning Network doesn't even really work. And uh, XRP, we're seeing the beginning stages of actual adoption. And so when it comes to fundamentals, that's where I'm at. I don't care. I think that as long as XRP continues to be adopted, the short-term price action over the next day, week, month, year, uh, years even, I'm not really going to care a whole lot necessarily. I mean, maybe it'll pop and then we'll get all excited about it. Okay, fine, I'll cover that too if it happens. I mean, it will at some point, I think. <laughs> but uh, it's about the fundamentals for me, and that's why I wanted to share this for you. So when you see Litecoin jump up to whatever, here, let's even click on this to see what it was within the last 20 okay so it was at 126 and it jumped up to within the last 24 hours it jumped up to 139 that's a pretty big spike whatever this happens in crypto but i like the point that galgatron made that's why i wanted to share it with you check this out this is another thing i told you i was going to cover here this is from at zerpound on twitter here and he tweeted out he, i got two tweets from him here here's the first one one XRP can pay for about 80,000 transactions at the current lowest fee of 0 0.000012 XRP. On average, we currently burn about 1,000 XRP or less per day. Now check this out, though. <laughs> he states, if 10,000 XRP was burned every day, which, by the way, I'm not a math wizard, but that would be 10 times what we're currently seeing burnt on a daily basis. If 10,000 XRP was burned every day in network fees, it would take about 27,000 years to burn all of the XRP. And then he writes, I think we'll be okay. <laughs> kudos. Yes, <laughs> kudos to you, sir. I think we'll be okay as well. Yeah, I don't think we're in any danger of burning all the XRP. Again, like I said, it's just there as a, as a preventative feature to just prevent DDoS attacks. That's pretty much it. And uh, next we hear from... Same guy, at Zerpound, and this is fascinating. The network fee can be lowered from the current lowest fee of 0 0.000012 down to 0 0.000001. At the lowest possible fee, a single XRP can pay for 1 million transactions. Even if XRP had hundreds of millions of transactions per day, it will take literally centuries to burn them all. Why the concern? I'm on your side, Zerp. <laughs> Zerp, yeah. I don't see that happening anytime soon. And by the way, just a little fun side note here, a little supplementary information. Each individual XRP is divisible by 1 million. Each individual Bitcoin is divisible by 100 million. So if you think about it, there's actually, in terms of Bitcoin versus XRP, like how, how many more XRP is there versus Bitcoin? The answer is somewhere in the neighborhood of 4,700. It, it's right around there. But given that uh, the, the, rate, the way in which uh, each is divisible with the smallest unit of a BTC being a Satoshi and the smallest unit of XRP being called a drop, if you consider how many drops there are versus Satoshi, there's actually, this will be mind-blowing to you if you haven't heard this before, there are only 47 times as many uh, drops as there are Satoshis. And again, those are the smallest units of XRP and Bitcoin respectively. So again, if you compare on a higher level, XRP versus Bitcoin, it's about 4,700 times more, which sounds like a lot. But if you look in terms of drops, it's only 47 times more. And so that's why I think actually one day, uh, I think that XRP is going to have such a tremendous market cap, probably in the trillions. I'm just guessing this is not financial advice. I hope that happens. I think it, as long as real world adoption happens, I I'm pretty confident that it will at some point. But um, 
if it does, understand that people are going to be trading in fractions of a Bitcoin. And so people aren't going to be thinking in terms of one Bitcoin versus one XRP and what the ratio is there. When you're, tra- you're already trading fractions of a Bitcoin. And when, you, and when the world starts trading fractions of one XRP, how are they going to view it? They're going to view it as, oh, there's only 47 times as many. Mark my words on that. It's going to happen if we get to the point, and I suspect we will, if we get to the point where uh, XRP has such large market cap and it's so expensive that people are literally at times buying fractions of an XRP, it's going to completely change the mindset of those uh, retailers speculating purchasing XRP on exchanges. That's what I believe. Check this out now. Here's, here's the last thing I mentioned. Oh, man. This is like, oh, it's like painful to read some of this stuff. It's such fun. Charlie Shrim, favorite crypto felon. He's a felon. Here's his tweet. Facebook is launching their global crypto coin called Libra. What's interesting is they are offering companies to pay $10 million to become validators. If anything, it renders Ripple useless. And then he's got the little laughy face because it's so funny to him that he used the emoji where it's tearing up. So this is hysterical to him. <laughs> Good times. Thank you, Charlie Shrim. The first companies to create a Libra slash Bitcoin exchange will make a killing. That's what he says. Before I get into my analysis, I'm just going to read all these for you. Uh, come on, computer, load. All right, Max Kaiser. Here's what he tweeted out. Global coin, which is the name of Facebook's one, global coin from Facebook will destroy Ripple, says Bitcoin expert. And then he links to an article in which he's quoted, and I'll pull that up later. So those are the two that say Facebook's coin is going to mean the end of Ripple and XRP. Oh, sad days ahead. And then we got here, Kieran Kelly. And uh, he tweets out, Further to Charlie Shrimp's comments, I consider Facebook slash Libra coin more of a threat to Bitcoin than anything else. And uh, then there's a link to an article in which he was quoted. Then you've got Maddie Greenspan here, and he states, Facebook coin, and he's the, uh, I promise I get the title right, he's a senior market analyst at eToro. All right, Facebook coin isn't a competitor to Bitcoin. It's a competitor to the dollar. So there's four people, two of them say that it's bad for Ripple and XRP, one says it's bad for Bitcoin, one says it's bad for the dollar, or at least they're competing against the dollar, which is true. Well, aren't you glad you got your old boy Moon Lambo here to straighten everything out for you? All right, um, let me read parts of this, and just I'll just jump in at parts where I think it's necessary. Okay, here's the piece from Crypto's News. So this is the one, I think this is the one that covered Kaiser, right? Yeah, here we go. All right. Um... Here we go. How Facebook's coin will help Bitcoin but destroy XRP. Oh, my God. I just want to rip my hair out reading this. It's just, it's just, it's, it's non-sequitur logic. That's the reason I have a problem with it. Anyway, global coin has created a buzz ever since its announcement. The plus point about Facebook's crypto, as said by the company, is that its purpose is to offer hassle-free peer-to-peer payment services as well as other microtransactions that would directly place Facebook's coin in competition with altcoins such as LTC, uh, which is Litecoin, and Ripple's Crypto XRP, which is not Ripple. Ripple owns some, but they didn't freaking create it. Ah, All right. Details, details, right? Well, the devil's in the details, as they say. Both of these cryptos are renowned for their offering of cheap and quick transactions other than Ripple and Litecoin. They mean XRP there, I'm sure. Uh, This niche is also claimed by companies like BitPay, which uh, is into uh, cryptocurrency-based payments. All right, look, let's let's just start out with why the, the Bitcoin maximalists, Charlie and Max, are, are wrong. Okay, what they're demonstrating here with this tweet is that they do not understand how the correspondent banking systems work, system works. Uh, a stable coin is a coin that's backed by a fiat currency or a basket of various fiat currencies. XRP, in contrast, is backed by nothing except for market confidence. It's traded on exchanges and it's worth whatever people buying and selling it say it's worth. That's it. It's completely different. So why does that matter? Well, enter the correspondent banking system. There are Nostro Vostro accounts, meaning pre-funded accounts. So if you want to, you, I'm sorry if you already know this part, but I got to lay out my case here. So uh, if, if you want to conduct a transaction, if you're a bank and you, you want to convert one fiat currency to another, you have to have an existing relationship with a bank in that other country. Your, your, you know, your bank and then the destination bank. And that means that you have to have trust. This requires trust because you're not going to send over anything of, of actual value. You're not going to send over currency if you can't trust that person on the other end. And it can take the better part of a year to develop new relationships, by the way. That's a fun little fact, isn't it? And so 
that's why you get these instances where, you know, when you're converting currencies, given that there aren't corridors from one currency to every single other currency, you end up with a lot of intermediaries. And that's why everything's so fractured out there in the correspondent banking system. You have a chain of bilateral banking arrangements, bilateral banking agreements. That's, that's what it is. And they all require trust. Now, with XRP, uh, it's a decentralized platform. You know, each um, it's you know it's it's a blockchain, but they're called ledgers. That's just a new. That's just a little detail. So each ledger that is closed again is completely decentralized, and you can do whatever you want with your XRP. There there is no central point of failure, and that's that's the reason that this is an opportunity for solution. The way that XRP is designed to work is that if you're in, for example, you're in the United States and you and you want some some pesos. For example, you want to convert your U.S. dollars to pesos, uh, Mexican peso, then you sell your XRP on an affiliated X-Rapid exchange. Then you buy XRP with, with your United States dollars, and then that moves to an exchange that has XRP in Mexico, and then that XRP is sold for the Mexican peso, and that's it. So, And you can do that. You don't need a chain of intermediaries anymore, and, and that's, that's, that's where the, the differentiator is. And, and so what's going to happen here is even if, even if, well, not even if they've announced, uh, even though this global coin by Facebook is going to be ban- uh, uh, backed by a basket of, of currencies, uh, understand that uh, you know, it's, it's, it's only as useful uh, to people as, as it, it's, let me rephrase that, it's only useful to those that are within the network, okay? They're blocking people out, so all those people that are, are not you know utilizing those those particular coins for example the, the, uh, the fiat currencies for example that's just more incentive to create their own network this is the walled garden problem that uh, ripple is very well aware of and and uh, david schwartz ripple cdo has, has spoken at well really written he's spoken and written at length about this and uh, you know i'll go ahead and, and <laughs> i'll just link the article that uh, I guess more of a blog, really, that Brad Garlinghouse, Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse, wrote a few years back when all these bank coins started to come out. Because understand that a bank coin is the same as a, a bank coin is a stable coin, right? Because it's backed by a fiat currency. The only way, you know, that something could not be a bank coin is if it has a real market value, or not be a stable coin is if it has a real market value. That's a better way to word it. So, uh, is is uh, this? The stablecoin going to knock out XRP? No, it's not capable of doing the same things as XRP because, again, it requires trust. Whereas with XRP and the way that Ripple is seeking to utilize it in the correspondent banking system, it's a trustless system. XRP, you don't have to trust it. The only thing you have to trust is the cryptography behind it. You have to trust blockchain. That's it. Not individual actors. That is the key difference. That's why stable coins like Tether or anything else are never, ever, ever going to be able to do what XRP is, is seeking to do and uh, we're at the beginning phases of seeing it do. It's never going to happen. So they're absolutely wrong there, but they don't know that. They just have their opinions. And so there's two things that are going on here, one of two anyway. Either they're ignorant, and I don't mean that as a pejorative. I mean it as in they literally don't know what they're talking about, or they're, they're seeking to spread uh, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. FUD. It's, it's one or the other. They're either ignorant or they're being deliberately deceptive. Both are bad. But that's where we're at right now. Then you've got here uh, Kieran Kelly. And by the way, um, I like this guy. Um, Kieran Kelly, we actually follow each other on, on Twitter. Um, I haven't interacted with him too much, but I read his tweets all the time. He's pretty active within the community uh, on, on Twitter, more, more so than I am even. And I have my little spurts. Sometimes I have dry spells where I'm just like kind of reading silently. I'm, always, I'm on Twitter every day, just, but most, a lot of time it's just me reading. But love his content. And so um, I, I, I think he's wrong here. And so I wanted, that's why I wanted to preface first saying um, – I wish I didn't even have to do this, but I do feel the need to because I don't want anything to be misconstrued. I like this guy. I have a different opinion than him. That's it. On this particular topic, I agree with him on almost everything Ripple and XRP related. But um, I like um, I like the, the idea of critical thinking, and I'm, that's what I'm engaging in here. And if, if he or anyone else thinks that I'm wrong, uh, that's fine. You can tell me because I'm not right about everything. You know, I'm sure I have opinions that I hold firmly that are wrong, and I just don't know it yet. So if I've got, uh, got a, a firm opinion like this one where I'm wrong, go ahead. Call me out. I don't think I'm wrong, though. So he, he tweeted out, um, Further to Charlie Shrem's comments, I consider Facebook, LibraCoin more of a threat to Bitcoin than anything else. And for this, we're going to need to go to the actual article, which is right, you know, here we go. So first of all, it cited uh, Charlie Shrem's tweet here, the article did, and then you got what Kieran Kelly had to say about it. <clears throat> 
And the article states, a uh, little headline here, Kieran Kelly dis- disproves uh, Charlie Shrim's opinion, says Bitcoin would rather be threatened. Kieran Kelly, a Ripple XRP-centric analyst on Twitter, responded to disapprove Shrim's opinion in defense of his choice digital asset XRP. Kelly averred that Libra would only threaten the stability of Bitcoin BTC since they will eventually fall in the same market. Uh, he claimed that this will make the proposed coin an unavoidable uh, competitor of Bitcoin. For Ripple XRP, he said its major aim is to serve as a bridging asset. He added that its utilities also make it uh, quite functional for remittance companies and on-demand liquidity for banks. And uh, the reason that I, I do disagree with this particular opinion that Kieran holds, and by the way, he's a real sharp guy. I want to say it again. Nothing against him. Just... I happen to disagree on this particular point. Um, A big part of the reason is I I think this is wrong. It kind of is a similar concept to what I was saying about the importance of trust not being required when utilizing XRP as a bridge currency. Uh, And in the core of the banking system, again, trust is required. It's absolutely required for any transaction to take place. Uh, You know, with, with Bitcoin here, uh, it is decentralized to whatever degree. You can debate that with me if you want. I don't really care. I'm not a BT ma- BTC maxi. I'm not an XRP maxi. I'm not a maximalist of any coin. I just follow what I think makes logical sense. I'm not here for ideology. <laughs> you know, I just think it's fascinating, and it's, I think it's a, a high risk but potentially very high reward investment, and that's why I'm doing it. You know, I don't know for sure what's going to happen. I'm just, I have a certain level of confidence, so I'm throwing my money in it, all right? But uh, again, Bitcoin is decentralized. The, you know, it's not backed by anything other than the the confidence of those participating in the market, which is also true for XRP. That's that's definitely the same case. And and so, you know, is is this stable coin, which is backed by a basket of fiat coins, the same as Bitcoin? No, it's not. And that that's why I disagree with them. It's 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 fundamentally not. Bitcoin is a trustless system. Facebook's coin is a trusted system. You have to have faith in those currencies that are backing it. Without that, without those those dollars that are backing the Facebook coin, it has no value. Um, and again, the white paper is going to be released, so you know maybe it'll even be traded on exchanges somehow. I don't know. I mean, Tether is, and that's a stable coin. Uh, most of the stable coins that banks create, they're not ever traded on exchanges. It just doesn't happen. But that piece of information I haven't seen released, so we might have to wait till June 18th to see that. I still say it doesn't matter because it's backed by... I don't know how many fiat currencies. It could be one, two, three, four, five, ten, twenty. I don't care how many. Um, you know, e- even if it in- even if it were backed by every fiat currency in the world, which I can't even fathom, but even if it were, that still requires trust. And so, people buying and selling Bitcoin, especially those that are fervent believers in its original use case as a peer-to-peer cryptocurrency without a, a counterparty. I don't think they're going to be dissuaded by what's happening with Facebook. I just I can't imagine that happening. I don't think that would ever happen, As, especially the the most true diehard Bitcoin maximalist. I just don't see that freaking happening. And then you've got the third opinion here, which is from Matty Greenspan again. He wrote, "Facebook coin isn't a competitor to Bitcoin. It's a competitor to the dollar." Now he was not featured in an article, so I can't pull anything else up. But this is silly, okay? Uh, okay, so it's the same freaking reason every time here. Uh, I don't know how these people don't know this. Um, in particular, the ma- actually the maximalists, like, they have their head in the sand. You know, I can see why they wouldn't know actually. <laughs> you know, Charlie and Max there. And by the way, I got to say before I explain my, my opinion on Maddie's point here, I you know jumping into crypto before I got into XRP, I. I, like, I enjoy watching Max Kaiser. He's a lively, kind of a weird dude, but I like him. He, he's a fun guy to watch if you've ever watched him for any amount of time on YouTube defending his point. Like, there was a debate of him against Peter Schiff. You should, you, you should like, seriously look that up on YouTube. It was very entertaining. He's just a riot to watch, and I like the guy. And then I, I find out he's just anybody that responded to his tweet here, you know, in Pro XRP or question it politely or not, it doesn't matter. He's just blocking you. He's just a closed-minded guy, and so apparently I'm I'm just I'm his enemy because I support um, XRP, and it doesn't mean I'm anti BTC. BTC is fine if it can get you know real-world adoption in terms of peer-to-peer cryptocurrency, great. And if that happens, then XRP doesn't achieve that, and it's just used as a, a bridge currency, which is a completely different use case. That's cool. Although XRP Labs actually is in the process of. Uh, trying to get it used as actual currency so in that sense it's kind of a competitor to bitcoin maybe they know that and maybe that's why they're running i don't know because bitcoin's freaking slow and lightning network doesn't work today 
maybe it will one day, but I, I don't know. It just doesn't now. So um, it was. it's just, you know, I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed, Max Kaiser, because I enjoyed watching you. And it's just, how could I not lose at least a certain amount of respect for the, the way you're treating people within the XRP community for merely having a different point of view? If your belief in Bitcoin is so fragile that you see XRP as such a great competitor that you have to speak of it in this way and say falsities, I mean, what do, what does that say about you? It's either pure ignorance or you're intentionally disseminating false information. Either way, it's bad. So, man, uh, you come off as a likable guy, but I just, uh, being honest here, lost a little bit of respect. Man, that's what can I say? So as for Maddie's point here, though, Facebook coin, again, isn't a competitor to Bitcoin. Uh, it's a competitor to the dollar. Okay, that's silly. So <laughs> consider this. <laughs> We're talking about Facebook coin, which which is a stable coin backed by multiple currencies. You can bet your bottom dollar that the dollar is going to be one of them, right? Okay, the U United States dollar is going to be one of them. So it's like saying the dollar is going to compete against the dollar. I'm sorry, Matt Greenspan. In what world does that make sense? The dollar is going to compete against the dollar and not Bitcoin. That doesn't make any freaking sense. Even if it's even though again they did state it's going to be a basket of currencies that back it. But that may specifically be by region, but you know, you're probably going to deal with whatever your, your native uh, fiat currency is wherever you happen to live. That, that's my guess. We'll see on June 18th, hopefully, when more uh, details about this coin are released here. But uh, one thing's for sure, there is no true market value of, st of this, this stable coin that Facebook's putting out. It's assigned a value by, and, and they haven't even stated who yet, that I, I haven't seen it in any articles anyway. Like, who's putting up the dollars to back this? You know, who, who is it that's doing this? You know, and that, that again, that's a that's a trusted system, not a trustless system. And so, I'm sorry. I think that all four of these people they, they they've they've got it wrong. Uh, the, the Facebook coin, who, who who's it a threat to? Uh, not not Bitcoin and not XRP. <laughs> you know, they're doing completely different things. That's kind of like saying like Tether is a threat to uh, XRP or or Bitcoin. And by the way. I've seen those cases as well. I actually have. There are people out there that think that a stable coin like Tether, literally, some people have said Tether is, is going to, sooner or later, they say they're going to take over uh, <laughs> XRP, at least in the capacity in which Ripple seeks to have it used as a, as a, a bridge currency. So there you have it. I think so silly. If you think I'm nuts or you think I'm wrong, please drop a comment below if I missed something. Um, and you know what? If I am wrong, tell me I'm wrong. Prove it to me. I actually would like that. I don't get offended by people that have different viewpoints as me. And you know why? Because if you prove to me that I'm wrong, I can stop being wrong. And that sounds like a net plus to me. What do you say? So I'm never going to be right about everything, but I think I'm right on everything I said today. If I missed anything or I got something wrong, let me know. Because I would actually genuinely appreciate it if you have a friendly, critical opinion to share with me. I really do appreciate those thoughts. So um, always do it with me. I like lively debate as long as it stays friendly. I'm totally cool with that. So um jump have at it you know but uh that's all i got for you today thank you so much for for watching everybody i really do appreciate it i am going to bed what time is it now oh my god it's 12 19 here as i write this did i just record almost a half hour video okay i'm cutting it um <laughs> thanks so much for watching especially if you made it to the end i am not a financial advisor do not buy or sell anything because of anything that i say all right that would be a very 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 bad idea catch you in the next one guys